So now let's talk about in detail about vitamin B12 metabolism. First you have vitamin B12 from meat, eggs, and their product. Okay. Then you will have vitamin B12 combined with R binders, which is specific kind of proteins. Then, in, in somewhere, I will not talk about location first, then you will have vitamin B12 free, which is without R binder. And finally, you'll have vitamin B12 plus intrinsic factor. And the final pathway, there is terminal ileum, which is for absorption. And in the terminal ileum, vitamin B12 will combine with the transcopolamine 2 which is actually plasma protein for transfer of vitamin B12 to several tissues. So this is for several tissues, so it will storage in the liver for 10 years. All, so you'll go to metabolically, metabolically active cells. Now you need to fold now we need to fold this diagram how first this is our binders they are come from salivary gland okay this is protection i mean this protect vitamin b12 uh, from destruction by hydrochloric acid in the stomach okay this is vitamin B12 free, usually occur in the stomach or duodenum actually. Okay, so the second location will be duodenum. The third location is the terminal ileum, and finally here B12 and transcopolamine. It is the plasma location. It is not actually, it is not fi finally, it is in the blood and from the blood will go storage which is, which is basically the liver, usually storage for 10 years or to metabol metabolically active cells, meaning the metabolic active cells in the body. And how about the processes? What are the processes that are responsible for metabolism of B12 in each organ? Here you have vitamin B12 and R binders in the salivary gland and the mechanism why R bind and the causes or the reason why R binders attach to vitamin B12 in order to protect vitamin B12 due, uh, from HCL destruction. And, and who is responsible for making vitamin B12 free is the enzyme called pepsin. How can I how can I have this enzyme? Usually, you can have this enzyme from conversion of pepsinogen, okay, to pepsin. What you need here, you need here HCl, which is the cell responsible for HCl. It is the parietal cell, okay. It is the parietal. They are. It's parietal cell. And how about, and if vitamin B12 become free by the effect of pepsin, now vitamin B12 need to bind to intrinsic factor. Usually intrinsic factors come, this is intrinsic factor, and intrinsic factor also basically come of parietal, comes of parietal cell. So now parietal, you have two mechanism of two actions of parietal cells. It secrete HCL, which convert pepsinogen into pepsin, and pepsin responsible for vitamin B12 degradation of R binders or unlock R binders from vitamin B12 to make vitamin B12 free. And then in order, we, you need vitamin B12 free in order for intrinsic factor to be incorporated or bind with vitamin B12. And the final, the final complex is vitamin B12 intrinsic factor. This is needed in order for Absorption of vitamin B12, absorption of vitamin B12 into in the terminal area.
okay in the terminal area and after absorption again you will have in the plasma b12 and transcopolamine 2 and from the plasma vitamin b12 either go to cells or storage in the liver why why i am telling you all of these stories because because there are causes behind all of this and now we're gonna talk about the causes in detail so the first important cause of vitamin b12 deficiency usually it is dietary deficiency if you uh, dietary deficiency in case of vegan individuals or mal mal malnourished individuals okay so people who don't consume usually adequate amount of meat and eggs are risks are uh, are are high risk for vitamin b12 deficiency again what other causes if you have if you have decrease in hcl in the blood in the hcl in the stomach sorry or if you don't have intrinsic factor that's when you have a problem with the parietal cells i will make this mark which is parietal cell problem here you will have pernicious anemia which is the other and the, i think one of the most important causes of vitamin b12 deficiency if you will not, if you will have pernicious anemia that means you will have decrease in hcl pepsin og will not convert to pepsin our binders will not separate it from vitamin b12 if you will have problems with the parietal cells you will not have intrinsic factor vitamin b12 without intrinsic factor will not be able to be observed and how about if you have problem with the pepsinogen or pepsin itself that means it is a chronic pancreatitis this is the other problem this is the other cause of vitamin b12 deficiency chronic pancreatitis pancreatitis we classify chronic pancreatitis are malabsorption problem and we classify this as pernicious anemia which is type 2 hypersensitivity reactions what other causes if you have problem with the duodenum itself if or intestine itself here the problem you, you we, we can call this bacterial overgrowth okay or or fish tapeworm like diphylopathrium latum these are these are also important malabsorptive causes malabsorptive causes of vitamin b12 deficiency this kind of bacterial overgrowth usually consume large large amount of vitamin b12 and how about terminal ileum if you have a problem with the terminal ileum in case of crohn's disease which is very 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 important or in case or other problems of or other ileum other ileum problems okay 